guys, it's Kevin again, and uh, in this video, I'm going to be reviewing to you um, Justified Season 5, Episode 2, The Kids Aren't Alright. And um, I really enjoyed this episode. Let me just say, though, that this episode was probably one of the more funnier episodes I've seen. Um, I've never seen an episode Justified with this much comedy. It seemed like Raylan was getting all the funny moments tonight. And, I mean, not tonight, last night, in this episode. He was just cracking joke after joke after joke after joke. And he was so funny. Each one was so funny. Boy, had some great ones, too. But I, I really enjoyed the way this episode uh, went. And I just, I really, really enjoyed it. So, um, let's just get into this episode, shall we? So, we pick up tonight where we see, um, we're seeing, um, there's this beatdown going on at the uh, pot growing house over an accusation that the shipment was shorted. Uh, the guy begins, Hot Rod, uh, the guy begs at HR, who, which stands for Hot Rod, for money, for mercy. And the guy says he picked up the dope in Lexington, but he says he didn't really weigh it right. And he says he'll go back and take care of it, but HR says he'll send, um, he'll send someone else and leaves the other others to take care of him. They decide to, um, basically shoot him, and that's what happens to him, he gets shot. So then we see, uh, Raylan and Rachel, and Raylan and Rachel are coming to arrest the Detroit mob, uh, money man, Jacob, who is another idiot, basically. He's searching the house and says it's clean, he threatens them with a harassment suit, but they haul him out, and then Raylan, and then here is where Raylan gets a call, and this is where the episode's starting to get really funny. Raylan gets this call, um from somebody and he says and um I didn't really know what it was all about I really did not know uh he says he got a call saying he has to come in because the lieutenant is blaming him for his kids drug problems and you know he has to come in to uh fix all that and he says it should only take a couple of uh couple of hours and uh he leaves problem is they all took they all rode together meaning Rachel Tim and uh and uh Raylan all rode together. So Raylan takes the um the um the guy's Mercedes and leaves the other marshals with his ride. And I thought that was hilarious for the guys like, You just took my car. That that was really funny because Raylan just Raylan just does not give a damn in this episode. He was hilarious in that scene. I thought that was great. And I was laughing hysterically at that. Because I'm like, yes, he took the car. I thought that was really, really funny. So next we see, um, basically the, the cop tells Raylan that this girl who gave his son dope was calling out his name and saying Raylan was practically her stepfather. He tells a guy that he has his own daughter and it's revealed here that it is Loretta. Loretta is the girl who has this uh, drug problem. Now she sold, here's what Loretta did to get herself in jail. She sold um, dope to a, uh, to, a cop, to a cop's kid and um, basically he asked why she's throwing his name around and she says she screwed up and sorry and it's sorry she dragged him into it. And she tells him that she'll never ask for anything if he helps her. And he tells her it's complete bullshit. And, um, and he's going to let her basically ride out the rep. Um, just like everybody else. And I like that he didn't really, um, he didn't really listen to her. He let her just stay there and he just, he didn't listen to her. Because, I mean, she does a crime, she does a dime. I mean, that's, that's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. And Braylon, um, let her do that. So on the way out, uh, Loretta's boyfriend calls Raylan a pig on the way out, and he says, that's what you call a cop, and he's not a cop. And we get into the really funny scene here. The kid is outraged that he didn't get Loretta out and calls Raylan a dick. And I love the part where he's like, you're a dick. He's like, okay then, have a good one. And that was funny. Um, then Raylan meets up with Allison, who is uh, Loretta's social worker, who seems to kind of, um... I think she's going to end up being Raylan's uh, love interest for the season. I, I really do have this feeling that that's what's going to happen and that her and Raylan are going to become, you know, love, love interest. She's going to be his love interest. And um, she runs into Raylan on the way out and tells him that the boyfriend is a real dick and he tells her that Loretta is still in her cell and Allison keeps leaving her there, won't scare her straight, and will just let her know that no one cares. He says he's going to just talk to the boyfriend, and uh, they plan to talk later. 
So he finds the water's kid being threatened by the two guys that shot up that one guy in the weed bar earlier. And um, I was trying to figure out where the connection will go, and, and this is where it connects. Uh, Raylan shows his badge and asks their names, but they don't provide any names. Because um, obviously, you know, they don't want to be taken away, so they don't say any names. Um, so yeah. They talk some cheap uh, threatening, and talk, they talk, and then they uh, take off. And then Waters calls him an asshole, and Raylan orders him to break up with Loretta, but makes it sound like he's not, but he told him to make it sound like he's not good enough for her. And then Raylan calls Allison, says that he talked to Waters, he asks her to get together to talk to him about it. So then, um, Raylan comes to see Art and tells them that they've got Monroe, and Art asks about the car and he says it's impounded, uh, Mother Fed tells Art that Marshall should move to Monroe's house, this is, you know, um, David Vasquez is there as well, and Art asks if they're liable if someone gets broke, and the Fed says no, Art says yes. So after David leaves, Art tells Raylan that Sammy Tonin called for him while he was in Florida, and, he, and I was very happy he addressed the Sammy Tonin thing. And Art says he has to make sure it wasn't a prank call, but then Sammy had turned up de uh, turned up a deal. And Raylan asks if he was make thinking of making a deal, as I said. So Art says, based on his connection in Detroit, it seems like that's where he'd go to make a deal. And Raylan says he told Sammy to call him if he ever wanted to talk. So then they see Loretta. She's there. And uh, Raylan thinks she's there because, you know... Derek has broken up with her, but it's not. It turns out that he has gone missing, and Raylan has to help track him down, basically. So Raylan now uh, waits with the uh, two hoods, Derek and Loretta. Hot Rod shows up with his buddy and calls him a Molly crew. Raylan asks if they're unnamed, and HR tells him he knows his his father, and Raylan tells him that he needs to go back off the kids and no vendetta. He tells them that no one else better come into Kentucky and stick to Memphis. Hot Rod tells him that the problem is that he went into business with the kids and they did him dirty. Raylan tells him getting into the weed business with teenagers is like walking under a flock of birds and getting shit on and being surprised. So HR uh, threatens to kill Raylan and tells him that he didn't learn anything from his father. And Raylan shares an anecdote about how he learned to be ready and says he'll kill all of them before they can draw. And says he'll, um, and the star on his badge makes it all legal. Uh, so he drives to this bus stop. He's, he tells Derek to get out. He threatens to shoot him if he doesn't get out. And he, and he basically gives uh, Loretta a choice if she wants to get out or not. And uh, she ends up not leaving. Uh, she ends up falling asleep in the car, and so he drops her off at her foster family's house, um, and he accuses her of playing him so she would take care of her drug dealer problem, and she says she would play, she did not pay him, play him, but it, he who he is, he asked her to take it easy on the rest of us, and, um, then we see some idiots running around, drinking, playing with guns on the street, one guy runs while the other shoots at him with a beanbag, uh, around, Candy shows up to buy some drugs, but he tells her he's dry, she goes to leave, and he tells her there's some more shit coming in, and offers him a free taste if she gives him one, and uh, she offers him a Pop Rocks uh, BJ and tells her that the drugs will be in first thing tomorrow. So Dewey's being serviced by the couple of girls until there's a knock on the door, and Dewey says that unless Hitler has risen from the grave and there's... And there is, uh, to see him to go away. Turns out Daryl is there boozing it up with Dewey's booze and, uh, girls. So, um, or calls another office to ask where Sammy Tonin was the night Augustine was shot on the tarmac. And, uh, Allison and Raylan kind of have this glass of wine. She tells him if they are not headed for bed, he asks if she's going to use him and go home. And she tells him that they, she sold military equipment, uh, as a teenager to generals. And that she should, um, she made good money and got to travel. She says she would meet some military boys and he worries they, says, uh, they turned off his GLS. And he tells her he's a chaining man, asks if she likes to bowl. And, um, that's it for, uh, Raylan. So, it seems like him and this, uh, new girl, um, Allison are kind of gonna have, um, a love connection. I think it's gonna be similar to, um... I can't think of the girl's name, but the girl in season four. Um, but I think this girl might actually end up being a legit um, girlfriend, not like the girl in season four who actually turned out to be a traitor. 
So um, we'll have to see. But I really enjoyed the first half of the first part of this episode. But again, the second half of this episode, the Boyd stuff is definitely the most interesting. You know, we basically see that Paxton is in a coma. His wife is being grilled at his bedside by a local cop. He asks if it was a uh, boy Crowder and described as having a blinding smile and a crazy smile. She confirms it and the cop tells her he's the most dangerous man in Kentucky. She asks if she's afraid of Boyd and he says a Boyd should be afraid of him. So Boyd comes then to see Ava in jail. She's freaking out that he killed Paxton. Her trial's in 10 days and Boyd reassures her that he's doing everything he can for her. Ava apologizes, says it's humiliating. He reminds her that he's been behind bars too and says he's really the only person in the world looking And she says he's really the only person in the world looking out for her. And he tells her not to lose faith in him. So um, Boyd is chatting up with a bartender. He tells him that he wants to know where the drugs are. And then we got a very interesting scene. We see the cop come up and... Um, Boyd pretends that he does not know Paxton's wife. He says, who are you? I don't know who you are. And um, the cop says, identify that this was the man who assaulted your husband. And she says, it's not. So she looks him straight in the eye and says, it's not, which we know is bullshit because though he did do that. And um, for some reason, he's not, uh, she's not telling them that he did that though. Uh, she's lying about it. We find out later why, but um, here, here, what happened next. The bartender tells Carl that he'll get Boyd's cut of the money since Dewey steps out of his office. Carl uh, covers and says he's just upset that they find Chrissy because she was his favorite and Dewey says she was too fat. The bartender says other guys have asked about her too because she's heavier, she's developed other skills. Dewey tells him to hire uh, the big bitch back and Carl tells him to call when he has the cash and leaves. So Mara is ordered to take her e-cigarette out of the hospital hall and points her to the stairwell where she finds Boyd waiting. He tells her he can't quite figure out what she's up to. And basically she says that she had tried and saved him once she realized he hadn't killed him. And he, she basically says, and he says it's his fault for not making sure he was dead. So she tells him that Paxton actually will never be the man she married and so she's in a tough spot. And Boyd is really the only one who can help her. And um... Boyd says he would rather help than her, and Mara says she just wants to go home. She wants the $300 he offered Paxton, and he offers to finish Paxton off and says unless they're married for 10 years, she gets nothing. And he tells her he can't come up with the money now, and says he'll figure out, and she'll keep her mouth shut. So I really like where this is going. They kind of have this deal going on now, and I actually really like it a lot. I think it's really cool. So when is there at a bar? He doesn't know where Boyd is. He, um, you know, he's, he's talking to all of them. But then Boyd eventually comes in. He addresses them by name, Cyrus. And Boyd compares the situation to your cell phone being done. I actually really like this. He talks about how there's, for some reason, you know, there was a shipping problem. And uh, the shipping problem will be fixed in two days. And he opens up the bar for a few drinks. So, um, that's how, so that, that's what happens. So then we see um, Simon's Blair, and this is basically um, how the episode ends up ending with uh, Boyd. Sirens are blaring, lights are flashing in Mara's rear view, and it's the cop angry at her for changing her statement. He yanks her out of the car and chews her out for embarrassing her. He tells her he knows Boyd, comes to see her at the hospital. He pulls out a gun, tells her she is nothing more than a whore. He says he's going to arrest her for trying to kill Paxton, that any jury in Paxton would convict her. And he tells her to go home and think going hard about who attacked her husband and to come into the station tomorrow and make another statement. And he tells her to drive safe and take off. So she's being threatened now. She's not in a good position now and I think something is more something bad is gonna happen now. But then we see that in the hospital, Paxton's brain functioning is returning and he calls up for merit and he is now completely alive. So now we got a problem here. He's completely alive. What are we gonna do? And then at the very end we see Boyd sees this mess when he comes to pick up the shipment. The cars are all opened up and all the guys are laying down the ground and Boyd tells his guys to clean it up and he asks who could have done it. So that was basically the episode, and I gotta say, this was a really great episode, another really strong episode in my opinion, I thought it was a really, really great one, I thought there were some really great scenes in this episode, and I really enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys saw this episode, what do you think of Loretta's return, what do you think of all Raylan's jokes, I thought there were some really great jokes, um... What do you, what's going to happen with this Boyd and Mara thing? Do you think Mara's going to now tell Boyd, oh, we can't go through this because I'm going to go to jail if we don't? Uh, also, who made this whole mess with the dead bodies? Who did that? I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see who did that. And also, um, Art is looking more into this Nick Augustine case. Is there something he's really not telling Raylan? I think there kind of is something he's not telling him. Um, 
that's it for my review. I hope you enjoyed And also, what's going to happen with uh, Dewey and Daryl? Are they going to duke it out? It looks like they are. That's it for my review. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Okay, bye.